what's up everybody i'm bob walters this is locked up sports earthquake rocks the northeast but it can't shake away the yankees bats as they fall on opening day three nothing to toronto at home the mets with a big win yesterday alonzo with a perhaps season saving saving home run the knicks with a win last night and we speak with mark mancini in the mancini report all that and more coming up next locked up sports What's up, everybody? I'm Bob Walters. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us. And did you feel the earthquake? Did you did you feel it? Are you somebody who felt it this morning? Are you somebody who didn't feel it? Some people didn't feel it, I, which I can't believe. I felt it. I was sitting right in my living room, and it was it was pretty powerful, right? At the 4.8, I thought it was I thought it was very powerful. It, the whole building was shaking. I knew immediately that it was an earthquake. I know you, what you're gonna say, but I, I I knew immediately. Never been in an earthquake. Everyone says there was one in 2000, 2011. I was somebody who didn't feel the 2011 one, apparently, because that was the first earthquake that I really felt. I remember being in school, maybe upstate in Plattsburgh. There was one where it was a little bit. This one was like, it was a real earthquake. You know, I was like, where's the doorway? I had to wake my wife up. My wife told me I should have been in the tub. And I had to tell her that, no, that's that's tornadoes that you get in the tub for. You get in the doorway for earthquakes. So if, if next uh, earthquake... You know, when the big one hits, if my wife is missing, check the tub because that's probably where she's going to be. We don't have time for mistakes like that during these natural disasters. But earthquake today, solar eclipse on Monday. My birthday is tomorrow. It's kind of like the earth and the universe are celebrating my birthday all together. So everybody's okay. Listen, New York, New York's strong, right? New York, we will rebuild, as they say. Oh, there's another one right now. There's another earthquake right now. We are just having an aftershock right now. I can feel it. Look, you can see the camera moving. It's a pretty big one. Wow. All right. So there you go. On air aftershock. How about that? Doesn't get any more real than that. <laughs> oh, man. That was... There we go. First aftershock. So there you go. We have an aftershock. We have an earthquake. We have an eclipse coming. You can't tell me the universe isn't dying here. So... That that's what a big day for the Yankees, right? Opening day, Yankees is we're gonna continue through here. That's an aftershock. We will probably have aftershocks straight through the show. But the show must go on. Locked up sports must go on. So the the aftershock right there at uh what time is it? Right at six o'clock, right at the top of the hour, the aftershock. So <laughs> and that that was definitely an aftershock. I haven't looked at it. It just, literally just happened as we were doing that. So we'll continue the show, as I said. Um Yankees opening day today. There's a lot going on today. You got the Yankees opening day. You got the Mets in Cincinnati. You got the women's final four. Uh, we have Mark Mancini coming up. He's going to, he, we spoke to him earlier. That was before the first earthquake. Now we had the aftershock. So um, Mets are trailing one, nothing. I don't know how to run with scored because I don't have Apple TV, which I just was informed of. I, I wasn't, I thought I had it. I'm going to have to order it, I guess after the show, but one, nothing reds as they move to the second inning Yankees, this afternoon, listen, Stroman pitched well. He, he went six innings. He gave up. He had struck out six. He gave up no runs. The bullpen kind of faltered, but but you can't blame the bullpen either because, I mean, they give up the home run in the seventh and then the two in the ninth, but the Yankees' bats did nothing all day. They 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 would, you know, tied up in knots with the, with the pitching from Toronto and give, give Toronto credit. They came. They outpitched Stroman. It was a pitcher's duel through six. Really, up until the ninth, it was a pitcher's duel. It was one nothing going to the ninth inning, and the Blue Jays got two runs to spoil opening day for the Yankees. Tomorrow they're back at it, and like we said, the Mets trail one nothing. Yesterday, the Mets man was that a, a huge home run for for Alonzo. That 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 is as big as it gets right there. They're down in the second game in the ninth inning after losing the first game. Five straight losses. They were 0-5. And, and the first game, listen, it was, I told you there was going to be nobody in the ballpark. And, and there was. There was nobody there. Uh, may, they'd be lucky. I'd be surprised if there was 5,000 people in the ballpark for either of the games or, or total throughout the day. And they got a decent pitching performance in the first game. They, they were up 3-0. They blew the lead. Again, Tonkin in the bullpen. And something's got to be done about that because... Now it's two straight games that he's blown. His first two appearances, he's came in in extra innings, and he's blown the game. He's he's responsible for two of the five losses. And they gave up the lead. 
Then it's three uh, in the in the tenth inning. They have Batty, who bunts with a runner on second. The winning run on second, nobody out. Batty decide he he gets the 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 sign the bunt from the dugout. I don't. I'm not going to kill the Mets for bunting there. I would bunt them there. I am going to kill Batty for, because listen, I don't care if they don't know. You can't just say that major leaguers don't know how to bunt. They oh, they don't know how to bunt, and I know it's the truth. But uh, come on, how it's a fundamental thing. It really is. It's not like a hard thing to, to grasp. Like, bunt. Get the ball down. And I know it's not easy, but it's something that is important. And it's something that, that really should be taught more, right? Because he didn't get the bunt down. He ended up striking out. Now, I would have, after strike one, and I would have seen that he can't bunt. Okay, now he can't bunt. We're going to have to swing the bat. He did have a hit earlier in the day. He kept the bunt on. They, they, he couldn't get it down. He ended up striking out. The Mets don't score. They strand the winning run at third. And then in the bottom of the inning, three runs. Or I'm sorry. And then in the top of the next inning, three runs are scored against them. And they lose 6-3 in the, in the first game. And now, now you have five in a row. Now you lost five in a row. The ballpark is empty. It's rock bottom, right? You go eight innings or seven innings without a hit. Combined between the two games, between the end of the first game and the last and the second game, the Mets went 13 innings, a club record, without a hit. This team just can't hit. Now you're down one nothing. It's a one nothing game, ninth inning. It looks hopeless. Alonzo comes up, and he golfs one over the deepest part of the fence, the deepest part of the field, to tie the game. The Mets then get a walk and a hit, and they win the game 2-1, to one and, and, and as big of a home run as you can have for Pete Alonzo. And I don't want to hear that he doesn't hit in the clutch anymore or his home runs are meaningless because that was as big as it gets. They, they needed that in the worst way. Broke the seal. It gave them a win. Now you're going on the road and they probably feel good to get away, to be honest with you, just to get out of there. They were being suffocated at, at City Field because the whole thing's collapsing in on you, right? You got the mad first time manager. He's yet to win a game. You've lost five in a row. You can't you can't buy a hit. You got Lindor who can't he can't hit the water if he jumps out of a boat this first week. Nimmo is is getting on base a little bit with walks, but he's not hitting either. Alonzo and and Alvarez are, the, are, are carrying the team, but they're not really carrying the team because they've lost five in a row. And then you get that ninth inning and that kind of, you know sigh of relief. That, that the seal has been broken. We got to win. Now the monkey's off our back. Now they can just go play some baseball. And hopefully they can win some games here on this road trip. You know, you'd like to, to take two out of three from Cincinnati, who's a better and improved team this year, but still not, not there yet. And then you got the Braves, which, you, you know, you, you're kind of hoping to take one out of three against the Braves. So if you could get three and three on this road trip, you'd be happy, right? Get back home. Then you settle in, you get a couple wins at home, but that was a big win yesterday for the Mets, and, and it could not have come at a bigger time. And Alonzo, give him credit because the ball was out of the strike zone. It was low. It was down below his knees. He went down. He got it. Almost no follow-through, if you watch, and he hit it over the deepest part of the ball of the fence to the deepest part of the field and, and ties the game up right when they needed it the most. And, you know, it... it it started to feel like after the first game, it started to feel like this team's never going to win a game again, right? They're never going to win. How are they going to, you know, that, that, that's the 0 and 60, 0 and 162 was on the table. Brett actually texted me saying, he asked me how many, how many straight losses before they fire the manager? My answer to him was 20 because I, you know, they're not going to fire the manager right out of the gate before he gets a win, but 20 losses that the, then they'd fire him. So the Mets, like we said, they go to the bottom of the second. It is two. It is one nothing, Cincinnati. So now, right out of the gate, you got Quintanilla giving up a giving up a run. And I, like I said, I don't know how it happened because I don't have Apple TV. I thought I did. I don't. So we spoke to Mark Mancini before uh, earlier, before the first earthquake. So let's get to that now, Mark. He's listen. He's flying high. He's winning the the bracket pool, locked up sports bracket pool. He's he's right on the cusp of getting the trophy. He, the, the pirates have won six out of seven right out of the gate. The Steelers are signing people. He, he's on cloud nine here. So here's the man seeing report. We'll be back on the other side and we'll talk about the women's final four and we'll preview everything coming up this weekend. Enjoy the man seeing report, everybody. All right. So now we are joined by Mark Mancini, XM radio, all types of podcasts, 
Mark, it, it, listen, I'd be in a much worse lo- mood if the Mets would have lost that game. You are flying high today. We don't need to bash the Dodgers. Tell us about your Pirates. Welcome to the show. Acknowledge me. Hey, hey listen, <laughs> listen. I, I got. And before we before we start, before we start, you see behind me. You see the brackets behind me. Yeah. I want you to look at something right here. That is our pool. Okay. The man at the top, I believe, is who? Yeah, that's me. That's you. Okay. If UConn wins, you win the pool. The only way you can lose the pool is if Purdue wins. So if either of the other two teams win, and it's even if it's not UConn, you're the winner, Mark. So you, we got all kinds of good news for you today. The Pirates. Well, things run in. Hey, let me tell you something. Things run in threes. And okay. what I mean by that, UConn will win. I, it, it, and I'm, I'm guaranteed anything because they look I got unbeatable. Alabama. It, well, that's the thing. Bama's hanging in there too, so one of those guys will get in the title game. But I need UConn to win it. The second the only, thing, the Pirates. Pirates are hotter than hell, man. Six out of seven. The the Pirate Marking Work. Your Pirates are six and one. They're heading into a big weekend series at home against the Orioles, a, a battle of two of the best teams, right? In the major leagues now. Yeah. Yep. Well, how, are they, off to, how that, are they off to a six and one start? Take, tell, take us through it, because a lot of people here don't don't watch the Pirates. Well, let me let me let me tell you something. It's 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 learning how to win. For the last few years, sometimes you got to lose to win. And what I mean by that, you got to take your lumps and bruises. And the Pirates have done that. They've steadfast this ship, even though a lot of people haven't been on it. And you know, losing O'Neill Cruz early in the year last year, going through them the the the, the peaks and valleys. This is going to be a special year. And I know they're only seven games in, and people are saying, well, they, they beat the Miami Marlins and they beat the Washington Nationals. That's not beating anybody. But you know what, Bob? Consistency makes people believe. And if you stay consistent, this big weekend series with the Orioles, and let me tell you something, Pittsburgh owns the city of Baltimore, man. They beat them in the 70s and 71 and 79. So here we go. Bring the that, Orioles that's half, a, that's half a century ago. The guys – the guys who are on the Pirates and, and Orioles now were 20 years before they were born, the 70s yeah. were. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I'm going to bring that tradition in here. It's going to be a big series. Sold out today. Tickets Did are going say, for oh, today, Is today the home opener? Yeah, today is the home opener. Well, Pitt, look, Pittsburgh's a good four, sports town. Yeah, it starts at 412. They take their area code, the 412. So, you know, uh, I'm excited. And the third thing is, here come the Penguins, five zero and two in their last seven. Yeah, but they're, they're not. They're not. I, I haven't looked at the Penguins, but they're not in the playoff race, right? Yeah, <clears throat> they're only two points out of it. Oh, are they really? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. If that's now, the case, wouldn't, then, wouldn't, then yeah, then let, here come let me the tell Penguins. You something wouldn't, wouldn't that be remarkable if we go against your blue shirts in the first uh, round? <laughs> oh, no, listen, that'd be not. I wouldn't mind that because we need it. You know, you know where you lose the Stanley Cup when you win a, a first round series in like six or seven. We could sweep right through the Penguins and get get a nice easy right onto the second round. I don't know. I don't know if somebody wants. First of all, if you come in hot, nobody wants you. Second of all, that's a dangerous squad. Even though they've been struggling of late, do you want the Penguins in the first round if you win the President's Cup? You're right. And historically, we haven't done well against the Penguins. We beat them in in seven games in overtime. Of course, last time we played them, but but that was that that series killed us. When you take that right. first round or that second round series to seven games like that and you get beat up for two weeks by the other team, it's tough moving on to, to the next round. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing there. And that and that that would be the, the biggest thing. But, man, the West is loaded, too. Look at the teams in the West, Vegas, Winnipeg, Vancouver. I mean, that, that whole conference is loaded. You got There's like four teams over there with 100 points. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun playoff. I Listen, as bad as the Mets are now, I just kind of hope that the, the Rangers could give me something into the spring because at this point it looks like the Mets might be done by June, you know, the way yeah. they're playing. And it, th- that was a huge win. It was a huge home run by Alonzo uh, last night. We talked about that before. Now, I wanted to get to some NFL stuff with you. Uh, Bills trade Stefan Diggs to the Texans. The Texans went in two years from being the laughing stock to now they're loaded. They got a coach that everybody wants. They got a quarterback that everybody wants. Now they got a top receiver. What do you think about the trade? Well, I don't know what's going on in Buffalo. I mean, they, they're, 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 they're great, you know, during the regular season, they fizzle in the playoffs. Diggs is going there, but you're going to, I'm going to overshadow this thing because uh, John Jefferson headed to Pittsburgh, man. What a target there. Yeah. 
Hey, listen. Then, yeah, I mean, now now the Steelers are loaded, man. We're loading up now. We got. I, I don't know if I'd say loaded. There. I think they, they're listen. They're always they're always a playoff team, so it doesn't even matter. But but they are they're, they're better. They're, you still got the Chiefs though. You still got the Chiefs in the AFC for oh, both the Texans on, and the and, the, and the, Are you are you gonna are you gonna give me the Chiefs? Come on, man. The Chiefs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. The Chiefs stink, right? The Chiefs. They they they've no, only I, won. I'm not. Saying, many... <laughs> I'm not. Saying, you know what? Every, every year I hear about it. Okay, the Chiefs have won it. This was this past year was the first year where the Chiefs, I could say honestly, deserved it. They've bucked past some teams in the past to to to, to win Super Bowls and, and and stuff where they avoided the Bengals and the Bills and all that crap. Uh, I, I'm not I'm not sold on on the Chiefs. Do you think Steelers Mahomes is a top? Hand. Do you think Mahomes is a top five quarterback of all time? Top five quarterback of all time? No, I'm not giving it to him yet. No. Oh. No, I I'm think not crazy. I'm, well, I'm not. Well, he never I, I plays a bad game, Mark. He never plays a bad game. He never well, does. He, he never. He never yeah, plays but, a bad game. Yeah, Every but, game he, Bob, he, he. Bob, the league has changed. Come on, man. You can't touch the quarterback. I, uh, I, we, we, I'm, I'm taking Terry Bradshaw over Patrick Mahomes. Okay, I can live with I'm, that. I'm, I'm taking Tom Brady over uh, Patrick Mahomes. I can live with that. Okay, I'm, I'm putting him ahead uh, of Montana. I'm, I'm taking I'm taking Troy Aikman over Patrick no, Mahomes. No, no, you no way, no way. Okay, here we go. Here's where we stop and argue because no way you're taking Troy Aikman over <laughs> over Patrick Mahomes. Oh. Troy Aikman was great. Troy Aikman had a great offensive, a great offensive line, a great running back, and a, a great receiver, an all time receiver. He had, okay. The, how about how about the guys that didn't win a Super Bowl? Would you take them over Patrick Mahomes, Dan Marino? I take over who. Dan Marino. Okay, I I, I could get I I don't, but I could I, I could live with that answer. I could live with Marino. Okay, how about Dan Fouts? No, 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 no way, Dan okay. Fouts. No way, you cannot. You John can't give Elway? me Dan Fouts. No, I'll give you Marino. I'm not giving you Dan Fouts. And you know it. You know it's not Dan Fouts either. I can tell by the dumb smile on your okay, face. About, you know Dan Fouts is not better than, about, than Patrick Mahomes. How about Joe Montana? No, John I think he's right there with Joe Montana. I think he's. I think it's Montana, and it's and it's Holmes right now, and Holmes is gonna and and Mahomes is gonna pass him. Because let's it's gonna be real. Mahomes is gonna win another Super Bowl. I don't know about that. I, now, I, what, I, now I, I, he's not gonna. Get, he's, there's no way Mahomes is catching Brady. Okay, fair, fair, but but that 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 doesn't necessarily mean anything. I think I think Peyton Manning's better than Brady. You didn't even mention Peyton, and you didn't even mention Peyton Manning. By the way, you you put the fact that you put Dan Fouts. The fact that you you said Dan Fouts before Peyton Manning, you should be ashamed of yourself. (laughs) I'm not. I'm not a Peyton Manning guy. I I know. I know. You know. It's crazy. Fouts Fouts never won a ring, but he threw three thousand, four thousand. I'm not saying Dan Fouts was. I'm not saying he's a bad quarterback. I'm saying he's not Patrick Mahomes or or Peyton Manning. Now what? What? now, if somebody put G- a gun to my head, Elway over Mahomes. Uh, that, uh, that okay. Uh, that, that's another one right there. Elway, Montana. Okay, you know we get. That's a good. These are good arguments. We could have this all day because we could go back and forth all day. But Elway's a good one. I didn't even think Elway. Now speaking of the Chiefs, what do you think about this car crash with, with, with Rashid Rice? And and he's now admitted his role in it. He's owned. He owned the two cars or something. He they were drag racing, right? Right. Right. Well, they're uh, lucky uh, they didn't well, kill kill everybody. How many times have we heard this story? A million times. I mean, how many, how many, really, how many times have we heard this story? You can take the kid out of the city. You can't take the city out of the kid. It's the same story, too, with a lot of them. It's, it's Burris with the gun in the waistband shooting himself. It's the same story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just, it just goes on and on. And why is this even a headline again? I mean, this is another idiot doing a stupid thing that's trying to explain himself. I don't need explanations. You should be realizing what you're doing before you get in the car to do the damn thing. You're right, but he's also they're also 23 years old. We all did stupid stuff. I did stuff I can't even speak about here at 23 years well, old. Well, well, here's the thing. I I could argue that thing when when car insurance is 20 something uh and I got to pay the premium because everybody in that jurisdiction or whatever is going 100 miles an hour. Hey, I'm not going 100 miles an hour. Why am I in that thing? Yeah, no, you're right. Because his car hit you. Because his car hit your car. Yeah, that's why. Because his car might hit your car, and then the insurance company insures both of you, and then then you, they got to pay out anyway. But yeah, well, yeah. It, but if I'm if I'm using my brain, and I'm not going 100 miles an hour because I I would I had an upbringing where I was taught all those things, and this idiot's going 115 miles an hour 
because he's watched the Fast and Furious six times. Why am I? Why am I paying the same <laughs> premium as he? Because I'm the same age. Yeah, I, yeah listen, you know, you're what? You're you're 31 years old. Tomorrow, tomorrow, Mark, Mark, wish me a happy birthday. Tomorrow's my birthday. Wow, it is. I should sing happy birthday to you right now. How 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 old do you think I'm going to be tomorrow? 29. 28. 28. <laughs> that would be 43 43 tomorrow mark wow I'm, I'm almost halfway home hey i'm 62 and i look damn good D damn good damn good yeah i'll tell you anybody I, I i tell these guys anyone any of these guys try to keep up with mancini here i said look at look at this body you don't need a you don't need a lamborghini going 150 miles an hour to look good mark <laughs> no no i know all i need is my arrogance cologne do the do the pirates do the pirates take two out of three this weekend? Yeah, yeah. The, after this weekend, they'll be uh, eight and two, and then wow. the Tigers come in. Hey, hey! After at, we got a five game homestand, the Orioles and Tigers. The Tigers, so, right but the back. Tigers played the Mets. Let's be real. Well, and then and then listen, you, you know what you listen, did. You know what the Tigers and the Pirates did? They beat up on the NL East. <laughs> right, right. After after this five game homestand, and I'll get the Pirates here after this show. Um, we go right back to the East Coast and play Philly and New York, the Mets. Oh, okay. So you know what? You you, you set up for a good start then. You set up for yeah. a good start. All right. Yeah. Mark Mancini is his name. I'm going to put this up one more time. Mark needs anybody but Purdue to win the championship, and the trophy is his. Mark, thanks for coming on. We have a blast every weekend. We'll talk to you next Friday. I love you, brother. Have a blessed one. Happy birthday, my brother. Thank you, my man. Thank How about you. that? How about that? Mark Mancini, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, always, always a, a great spot. I, lo I love Mark. Uh, yeah, he's, he's in good shape right now in a bracket pool. If as long as Purdue doesn't win, if any of the three other teams win and, and listen, Connecticut looks unbeatable. He will be the champion of the locked up sports second annual bracket pool tonight. You got the women final four, the women it's it's and the, let's be let's be honest here. The women's tournament has been just as good, every bit as good as the men's, every bit. You got the Caitlin Clark situation. You got her going off with these threes that she's shooting from you know almost half court. She's great, great entertainment. You had everything with the LSU game. Now they play uh, UConn. They're the second game tonight. The first game is NC State against South Carolina. South Carolina is the one seed NC state, both the men and women in the final four. First time, obviously for that, for that school. And then you have a three seed in Yukon against the one seed, Iowa in the second game at nine 30. And all eyes are going to be on this. I mean, they got 12 million viewers in the game the other night, the LSU, Iowa, 12 million. That was an all time record. And tonight's going to rival that because the Yukon, Iowa game is going to be just as big. So, you know, the women taking center stage here, the last two years, the women's final four in the women's tournament has been every bit as good as the men's. And, and this men's tournament, there wasn't Norella's. It wasn't as, you know, it wasn't as upset since that. But you do get good games. And, and I watch out. I told you that early, early, very early, I told you, watch out for NC State. Because that big kid, there's nobody in the tournament, you know, in any school that could, that could stop him. Now he's going up against Edie and Purdue. And that's going to be an interesting matchup. Can he, can he beat him? Can Purdue finally get over the hump and get to the championship game? I think Purdue's probably the only team that can beat UConn. But, you know, NC State looks like it might, they're just a team on a mission. So you never, you really don't know. So it should be a good Final Four. We'll do more of that tomorrow as Brett is back tomorrow. Uh, we'll be doing the show in probably in the afternoon with Brett and everything. The Knicks with a big win last night. The Knicks, that was a big win. They had lost three in a row. They, they kind of would falling out, right? They were falling. The, the, the six seed looked possible. A week and a half ago, it looked like the two seed was possible. Then they lost three in a row, and they went down, and, and then you're like, uh-oh, here we go. Now we might go into the six. We have to play the three. They got to win. They kind of steadied the ship last night. A big fourth quarter from Brunson. A big game from Josh Hart. You got to get the pieces back, though. You got to get, you got to get Randall back. You got to get OG back. This team is not going anywhere without those two guys. And you don't want to get him back in game two either. You know, game two of the playoffs. You want to get him back this week. There's only six games left. So you want to finish strong. You want to get the, they're tied with uh, the magic, magic percentage points ahead, tiebreaker, whatever it is. But they're tied with the, with the magic in the 
The Magic have the tiebreaker, so they're in the fourth spot. The Knicks are in the fifth spot. And you don't want that either because you don't want to have to play the first two games in Orlando. What if you drop two of them, right? Now you come back home and the pressure's on. You're down 0-2. Season could be over with a loss. It, you, don't, you don't want that. You want to have games one and games two at the Garden. Dispose of the Magic early. Beat them in five. Beat them. You, know, you don't want to go six or seven. You start beat each other up in these early series. Then it kind of hinders you later. Especially with the injuries they got, and, and you know, where's Randle? Where's it? Where is he? What's taking so long? He didn't even get the he didn't get the surgery. Like, why? Why is it taking here so long for him to come back? I don't have an answer. I'm not a doctor, but but come on. And OG, they made a big trade for this for this guy, and he's done nothing but sit on the been on the shelf the whole time. It's ridiculous. So the Knicks got to get them back, otherwise they, they don't stand a chance in the playoffs. They might squeeze their way through the first round. Even like, you know, if they come back, but they're not going anywhere. They're not going to the conference finals without those two or anything like that. So we'll see how that goes tomorrow. Brett will be back. The return of Brett. It's we're going to do final four. We're going to go over the tournament. We're going to do Mets, Yankees. It's going to be everything. Stay tuned for that. A lot going on. Enjoy the basketball tonight. Mets are losing one, nothing second inning. Yankees lose opening day three, nothing. We had an aftershock right here on the show. What else could you ask for, right? A full show. Thank you to Mark Mancini as he, uh, him and his pirates. We'll see how they do. They got Baltimore this week. It's not going to be easy. So that does it for us. We'll talk to you tomorrow, everybody. I'm Bob Walters. See ya.